Section 1.4 is titled Building Functions from Functions. Um, so given two, three functions, um, we're going to show you how to put them together in a variety of different ways, starting with the four basic operations, um, but then talking about composition of functions. The first thing I want to go over is the four basic operations, sum, difference, product, and quotient. Um, I know we all know what the four basic operations are. The purpose of this slide is just to show you notation, what it's going to look like. Um, for some, you might see one of two different notations. You might see either f of x plus g of x, or you might see f plus g and the of x kind of taken out as a common factor, but you'll see one or the other. Uh, for difference, you're going to see very similar uh, look. You're going to see f of x minus g of x, or you might see f minus g of x, like that. For product, you're going to see f of x times g of x, or you might see it f g of x that way and for quotients you're going to see f of x divided by g of x or f divided by g of x uh, for both instances provided that g of x is not equal to zero so we cannot divide by zero uh, I think the notations that you're going to see more often probably be these over here. Um, but really you can see either ones. The example slide tells us to combine the two functions using the four basic operations. Okay, So let's do first, we're just going to try and squeeze this in here, so maybe write small. Uh, first let's do a sum. So I want f plus g of x. So I want the f function x minus 1 squared plus the g function 3 minus x. Uh, I'm going to have to foil x minus 1 squared so x squared minus 2x plus 1 and then here's my 3 minus x and then we combine like terms to make x squared minus 3x plus 4. Uh, we're not told that we need to factor it or solve it or do anything with it except find it and that is it. Next let's do the difference. Uh, the difference is nearly as easy as that was. Uh, let's do it over here. So for the difference, I want f minus g of x. I'm going to do it right underneath here, just trying to conserve some space. So I want x minus 1 squared minus. Now because of the subtraction operation, I'm going to use parentheses in front of or behind the minus 3 minus x. So I square that binomial x squared minus 2x plus 1. The reason for the parentheses is to make sure that I distribute the negative. Minus 3 plus x. So I get x squared minus x minus 2. Really the only challenge in the subtraction is making sure I think that the negative sign gets distributed. That would probably be where I see most of the mistakes happen. Okay, the next one, let's do product. So here I want fg of x. Again, I'm just going to work it right underneath here. So I want x minus 1 squared times 3 minus x. Uh, I can't multiply these together with the power here, so I must perform that power first. So we've seen it already a couple times. It's x squared minus 2x plus 1. 
times 3 minus x. Now I do have to multiply these together. As painful as that looks, I need to do it. So I get 3x squared minus x to the third minus 6x plus 2x squared plus 3 minus x. Combine like terms, write them in order, I get negative x to the third plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 3. There's my product. And finally, last on the list is the quotient. So for the quotient, I want f divided by g of x. So I want x minus 1 squared divided by 3 minus x. Now really with quotients, um, oftentimes when you set them up, they're finished. And that's the case in this particular problem. This happens to be the answer. Because generally with quotients, what we're looking to do is get it into a factored form, which the numerator is already in a factored form, the denominator cannot be factored, and once we get it into a factored form, we see if we can reduce any common factors from the numerator and denominator of the fraction. In this case, nothing reduces, which means just setting it up is the answer. The other way that we can combine functions, and I think it is the more interesting um, way to do it, as opposed to the four basic operations, is called a composition of functions. A composition of functions, uh, if I can describe it as simply as I can, is placing a function inside of another function. Okay, so we're not adding, subtracting, we're not multiplying, but we're physically putting one into another one. Okay, we've done this sort of thing before with, uh, with numbers. We've evaluated functions at numbers. Now we're gonna evaluate functions at functions. Okay, um, notation-wise, you're gonna see this. Um, looks like it spells the word fog. Okay, it doesn't. The functions are f and g. Um, this open circle is the notation that indicates composition. Um, I read this f of g of x. I suppose I'm in all of this. Okay, and it looks more like that over here. This is f of g of x. f of g of x. Of course, those functions could be switched. It could be g of f of x, and we'll see that in the example slides. First example of the composition says, find f of g of x and g of f of x, given the f and the g functions here. So, I want f of g of x. I like to oftentimes rewrite this. This means f of g of x. If I see it like that, it can be more clear that the g of x is inside of the f of x. Okay, so for this particular problem, I'm going to put this piece here. I'm going to place it inside of this piece's x. Okay, that looks like this. So here's my f function. It is 2x squared. And notice I just simply wrote it without the x. And where I had the x, I'm going to put the g function. Okay, so this simply means the f function evaluated at the g function. Okay, so I'm taking the f function and putting the g into the x. Okay, looks like this. If I work it out, this is 2 times 1 over x squared. I squared the 1, squared the x, and so this is 2 over 
x squared. The other way to do it, we've got g of f of x, which is rewritten this way, g of f of x. And written like that, it's, a, it's again, should be probably more clear that the f function is inside of the g function. So I might begin with my g function. It is 1 over x. And where the x was, I'm putting the f. 2x squared. Now there's nothing I can do to this except to write it without parentheses. That's as simplified as it can get. So it's done. Notice the f of g and the g of f are different and most of the time that is the case, that the composition is different. It's not a commutative operation generally. Same directions on this next slide. Find f of g of x and g of f of x and given two functions. So I start with the f of g of x, or rewrite if you prefer f of g of x. Write it however it makes it easiest for you to see what to do correctly. Um, so this says the g function is inside the f. So here's my f x plus 1. And where the x was is going to go with the g, square root of x. There's no like terms, there's no operation I can perform, so really that is just the answer. Square root of x plus 1. That's not too bad. The other problem, g of f of x, Again, rewrite if you prefer g of f of x. So here I'm going to take the g function, which is square root of x. And where the x was, I'm going to put the f function x plus 1. Again, there's no real operation to perform. I can't combine like terms. I can't, I'm not supposed to square or do anything. Um, this is just square root of x plus 1. Similar looking answers, but again, note that they're different. Again, most of the times the composition is different either way.